Yeah, yeah, we are. Love talking indoor football, and I've got a soft spot for guys that play these. Hot off a couple of wins as this ball Uh-oh. gets fumbled by Edwards and picked up at the 10 and into the end zone. It's a touchdown. Wes Bowers, the linebacker, with his head on a swivel. Yeah, there he is. There's the man, <laughs> Wes Bowers, Panther linebacker. How's it going? All is well. All is well. Glad to be here, man. I'm excited. I've heard great things about you. I've actually witnessed it firsthand. You always have a great time with stuff. You always got a smile about you. You, you balance that work hard and play hard has it always been that way for you always been that way uh since a young age you know i was instilled you know like you said work hard play hard and you know you know you put in that hard work you want to see you want to be able to have fun with it so i'm always trying to you know be positive bring positivity to the environment have a smile on my face and just enjoy enjoy life you know every day i can man every day is exciting do you ever get down i do get down i get down you know i'm human i get down but it's very, it's very quick. Uh, you know, I find myself learning from those situations and turning it, turning that frown upside down as fast as I can because you have no time to waste. Time waits for no man. So I try to enjoy life as much as possible every day. We played that soup and, a scoop and score against Frisco, which got you off to a fast start. Uh, it was a real tough loss for you out there. As a player, how long does it take for you to get over a loss? Does it hang with you or can you let it go the next day? Yeah, you know, uh, we, we always talk about, you know, you have your 24-hour rule. So you let it, you know, you let it sit with you for 24 hours or, or, you know, that the next day you learn from it, you watch the tape, you know, you take that, you you bite that bullet, you learn, you grow from it, you move on and and you never look back because, you know, those are opportunities of of a lot of growth, especially with a loss as tough as that, you know, you just, you, you have to learn from it or it will just linger around and that's not good for anybody. When was the last time you had a score on defense? Last time I had a score on defense was in college. Yeah, in college at Georgetown, I had a pick six. So that was exciting. It was exciting. It's been a minute, to, then. You know, getting in zone again. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> hey, what's this been like for you? You come into the indoor game after the three years at Georgetown and Bowie State for that last season. The the adjustment from the 11 man outdoor to playing indoor on the 50 yard field. Oh, it, it was a big adjustment for me, you know, just the speed of the game. You know, when I first got here, got here in March, uh, uh, roughly in March, you know, we had training camp and things like that. And it's just not the same. You know, practice is one thing, but the game is a whole nother beast. So, you know, I was, I, you know, I had the unique opportunity to be able to sit sit out for the first two games, uh, you know, and that's all because we have another great linebacker, Darren Hungerford. So that gave me the opportunity to watch a veteran, you know, play the game at a high level and just, you know, sit back and really get the P's and the Q's and get the speed of the game, the the nuances, the ins and outs, and just, you know, overall the rules of the game. But it's a lot of different rules, you know, and I have to be still at the linebacker spot. So it's a lot of things that, that don't translate, that the outdoor game doesn't translate to the indoor game, just a lot of mirror rules. You know, you have two high motions. So it was, it was totally different, and the speed is very fast, very rapid, and it was just like, okay, it's, it's bullets flying. So it was – um. It was a, a big learning adjustment for me. But being that we have such veteran guys and a lot of guys, you know, we have guys that won a championship in the IFL. So I was I'm, I was blessed and given a great opportunity to to be submerged with a lot of a lot of knowledge. And we have amazing coaches, Coach Wooten and Coach Keith. They just they gave me the game. They said, this is what it is. This is how you can be successful. And these are the little things that will set you apart from, you know, from the pack and, and really give you an opportunity to shine and really not be a rookie like, you know, like my my status in the league says I am. Linebacker Wes Bowers with us. Hey, what about learning the little nuances like the being in the belt and the illegal defense stuff, which was more common in the outdoor game? You know, those little small things that can make a difference in being penalized or not. Absolutely. So like an outdoor game, I was I moved around a lot. So like I had an opportunity, I moved sideline to sideline, you know, you know, ch- talking to my D lineman, I'll be right up on them, right behind their ear, tap them on the hips and things like that. 
you know, to make sure we have clear, concise communication. And I was just so I was a walker. I roam around the field, you know, eyeing down a quarterback, you know, giving them mean looks and all those type of things. But in the indoor game, you have to be stationary. And the first, my my first game, uh, I think the first few games, I might have I might have got I got I know I had one uh, defensive. Um, uh, I forgot what they called it, but I was moving, so I was I was leaning forward, and it was like just that small that small movement, I got a flag. So like you can't lean forward, you have to be you can't be stationary. I remember one time one of my players, uh, one of my teammates tapped me on the hip, and I kind of rocked, and I was like, oh man, I mean, I gotta hurry up and, and get still real fast before the snap of the ball. So those like those are really small things that you know as a player you have to know those rules because those can make or break a make or break a drive or make or break a game. And also you have like the mirroring rules, you know, the DB has to be within the shoulder of the of a receiver that he's he's in front of. And just all of those things, like the, the same with the D line, we have to be head up on field goals, extra points, you know, the the box in the alley. It's it's a whole lot of things, but you know, it's what makes the game great. And just knowing those rules and just being a true student in the game makes the game flow so much easier. So it was, it's it's totally different, but it's very exciting and nonetheless it's, it makes the game awesome. You mentioned the illegal defense leaning forward. So you're talking about your feet even being grounded, but if your upper body's moving a little bit, that counts. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. So I got I know a Northern Arizona game when we played away in Northern Arizona. Uh, the refs just told me like, hey, I know it's not, it might not be intentional, but it's the rules. So like I was just leaning forward, getting ready to for blitz, and it was very small. Like I'm like the, the receivers are getting to the line. It was just a small lean forward. I got to throw the flag. So it's just small things, man. You can make or break a drive, make or break a game. You're talking about your teammate, Hungerford. I want to play for you what he says about you because it's such a great uh, situation. It doesn't have to be great, but it is only because you guys make it that way. Here's Hungerford talking about West Bank. It, it so me and him get along so well. And from the, from day one, it's really been uh, a great connection. And from day one, we told each other, like, we're the best. Like, we are. We know we're the best. Like, as soon as we, as soon as we got to work – and in practice, we always push each other. You know, we're we're communicating with each other. When he put, when he plays, I'm constantly in his ear on what I'm seeing and you know things like that. And even when I'm playing, he's the same way. Like as soon as I come off the sideline, he's the first person I'm looking for to um you know see get his feedback, what he's seeing, things like that. So we've made a great work relationship, and it's really worked out for both of us. And to see both of us excel and be great and get the recognition, it, it's amazing. I would say I, I, I'm so happy to have him. And moving forward, I would say I know. We're going to push each other to greatness in these last few weeks. This is a good dude. And uh, he does admit it's not easy, though, right? Because you guys are both competitors. You want to be out there you know, every week if possible. But, you know, to know to make this work, you guys got to work together. And that position beats you up. I mean, you couldn't be out there for 16 games in a row, could you? I mean, if need be, I could. But, you know, having somebody like Darren, it makes it a lot easier. And you feel more comfortable like, hey, you know, my body's not where I need to be. You always want to give your team 100% of yourself. When you can, but if you can't, you know, you you, you have the we have the unique opportunity. Like, hey man, I'm I'm not feeling you know up to snuff. I, I know I can't give my all, and you can know, like, hey, I feel comfortable and confident that my 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 partner, my my other linebacker is going to step up, and is, we're gonna we're gonna continue to, to excel. The defense is going to continue to thrive without a hitch, and it just it makes everything easier. It it allows you to really be happy in the in the in the in the team with the team and the sport that you play. Just being able to, you know, just back and forth, man. That's my guy, Darren. Yeah, I can't, I can't say enough good things about him, man. You know, the the feeling's mutual too, and it it's got to be difficult because I know even on the day of the game, you guys don't always know. Like in the morning, you might not know who's going to be out there. In fact, Keith said, "Heck, I don't even know always until it's warm up time where I watch to see how guys move." So yeah. you've got that anticipation. Hey, I feel good. I feel good, and then finding out the last second you're not in or you are in. I mean, that's got to be kind of an emotional roller coaster it definitely is and you know it really it really emphasizes the you know that quote you know you just stay ready so you don't have to get ready and those are that you always have to stay ready because you never know you know when the number's going to get called you never know who's going to be who's going to get that the hey the, the nod that you're going to play so it's always you got to stay ready and you know just the relationship we have on and off the field i feel like that plays a, a very big part because you like i feel like we're brothers at this point you know we talk about things outside of football. You know, we, we, we share tears, man. We share laughs and, you know, we, we really bonded and, you know, just seeing like, if, like you said, like if I'm not on the field and, and he's playing, man, I'm, I'm one of his biggest cheerleaders. 
Uh, you, you hear me yelling in the stands. I'm, oh, man, I'm, I'm showing all my teeth every time I make the play. And like we, as soon as he comes off the field, I'm telling what I'm seeing, you know, giving him feedback, being his eyes and ears, you know, off the field. But it's, you know, it's, it's definitely not, it's, it's not an easy job to do, knowing that, you know, you're constantly competing with, you know, another top linebacker and he just so happens to be on your team. You know, when you have two guys that are at the top of their game doing, doing great things, for, you know, respectively, you know, it can be, can be kind of tough. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we know our role. We understand that it's the team before ourselves. So whoever gets the call, we're going to always do what we need to do for the team. And just, you know, knowing that, you know, I might be sitting out this game, I'm always give my all from the from the sideline and be a team player as much and best as I possibly can. So it's, it's he makes it he makes it easy. Uh, I feel like, you know, the relationship we have makes it easy on each other to always be, you know, there for one another. Panthers linebacker Wes Bowers with us. Hey, what about the positioning of this buy? You get a couple of them over the course of the year, and I saw guys at the airport the other day. And I said, man, I could, I could feel like a little bit of the, the burnout, the fatigue, and all these games in a row. Like, hey, to have the buy right now with two games left, I think might be the perfect time to have it. Nah, I agree with you, sir. Uh, definitely the perfect time to have it. Um, you know, we have this this buy stretch, and then we we go into these last two games, one at home, one away, and then right right roll right into the playoffs. And it's it's a perfect setup because, you know, it's not the end of the season or like, you know, like uh, we get that bye week, then we have to, you know, get our bodies back together. We have these two games that's going to allow us, you know, to, to, to give it all we have, getting ready for this, this playoff stretch, make sure our bodies are where we need to be, our minds are where we need to be. But we also taking advantage of this rest time that we get, you know, that we're, that we're, that we're graced with for this bye week. So it's a perfect, perfect placement, I would say, as well. What are you going to do during this downtime? During this downtime, I'm doing a lot of re- relaxing, you know, uh, just been relaxing, get off my feet, watching a lot of football film. You know, I have some guys around the league, so I'm just keeping up with my friends and things like that that play on other teams. But it's a lot of relaxation, working out, trying to stay in shape and just, you know, staying ready, staying around the game. But more so just trying to get my body ready for this this last push and, you know, making this, this, this championship run that we always talked about as a team. Do you get to work out much during the season or do you need to really kind of pace yourself? Hey, we got practice and maybe I, I do some, you know, kind of band work or mobility, but you can't really train hard during the year, can you? Yeah, you know, it's more of a listen to your body kind of thing. But, you know, you have to you have to work out because, you know, games are won before the game is played. And that's one in the in the weight room, in the classroom. So I definitely take the time to, uh, to exercise a lot. I do yoga. Uh, some my teammates and I, we do a lot of yoga. Uh, and then you know massages are another good thing that I've been I've been learning and to get done. You know, uh, as a professional athlete, you you kind of gotta it's a it's a it's a yin, yin and yang kind of dance. It's a it's a it's a delicate dance between how much rest do you want, how much work do you want to get done. So trying to maneuver and like I said, luckily I'm I'm around guys that've done it before that've been in, in my shoes as a rookie and you know have never played professional sports, not understanding you know what the body needs. But yeah, I work out probably three times a week, two times are a little more rigorous. And then one time just a lot of band mobility work. I work in my yoga, get my massages. So I'm definitely uh, learning the importance of taking care of your body. I saw a video of you on stage. I think it was the beginning of the Morgan Hill concert series on a Friday, you <laughs> and uh, Roderick out there yeah. as well. And I was thinking about, hey, this guy loves to be out there and, and be on the microphone and dance. What, what's your go-to karaoke song? My go-to karaoke song is My Girls by The Temptations. That's one of the first songs I've ever learned. My grandfather taught me that in the bathroom of our home. And we, you know, got the good acoustics, got the nice echo. So that's one of the first songs I've ever learned. And I've never looked back since. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. It took like about a half a second to go. I thought, ah, you know, maybe uh, Luther Vandross here. And I mean, he just went boom, just right like there. that. Yeah, absolutely. That's my go-to song. I sing it. Like we, we do like appearances and things as a team. And if there's a mic, if we have karaoke by any chance, that's the song I go for every time. <laughs> if there's karaoke at someone's house, are you like, man, this is my this is my kind of party? That's my kind of party. Just, you know, you know, all goes back to, you know, having fun and enjoying life, you know, live life with no regrets. Really just just being a positive light, you know, people can gravitate to and just enjoying every every second of every day. Hey, you're a guy that's excelled off the field as well because you got out of Georgetown three years, right? Before going to Bowie State. Uh, What about the task of juggling academics and football? And how much pride do you take in that and coming out of there with a degree and doing it so quickly? 
man, I, I take I have the the utmost pride in that because it's not easy. You know, going to a, a I guess they say what an Ivy level, a Ivy League level school is it's not a it's not something that was easy, especially trying to juggle you know sports with it. It was very demanding because you know we we had to maintain a certain GPA to be eligible to play football, but you know, you just know that there's thing, there's life after football. So I wanted to maintain, you know, proper, you know, academic standings, you know, because football was, it's, it's a hit or miss, you know, some people have the opportunity to continue to play after college. Some people might not. So I just wanted to be prepared for both ends. I wanted to excel on the field, but also excel in the classroom. And another thing was that I didn't want my identity to just be, oh, he's a football player. I wanted to, to people to know that I also, you know, was very intelligent and I could, you know, hang with the best of them in the, uh, in the, in the classroom. So that's what I did. And, you know, three years in and out. And my mom always, I always joked my mom. I said, the reason I finished so fast because I didn't like school. So I wanted to get out as fast as possible. So I tried, I took all the summer classes I could and every, every credit I can pile up. I was like, I got to I got to get out of here. So yeah, I got in and got out. <laughs> hey, what do you want to do after when you mentioned the beginning and end of football? Well, after, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of still on the ropes about that. And, you know, I have a few things going on, a few nonprofit organizations that I have and some things that I really want to do. Like I'm big on giving back, paying it forward and, and just, you know, making sure people that, you know, are, you know, not well off have opportunities in life to, to better themselves and better their situations. I'm all about giving back to the community and really just making sure that everyone you know, has a chance to to be the best them they can be. So I have some nonprofit that's geared towards that. And I also probably like I was like during COVID, I was um looking on looking into getting into politics, actually uh being a part of the like the board for my, my county, but it didn't really fall through. It was a lot of hoops and things that I, I would have to jump through being so young. But you know, I felt like I was able to do it. So that's definitely something I'll probably get into some um policy reforms and things like that. You know, when it's all said done with football, you got a good head on your shoulders. Who are the support uh, members of your team? You know, those folks that uh, that you you want to make proud, and the ones that have pushed you and and given you that love along the way. Uh, my family, my village. That's what I call it, my village. Like you know, uh, Rashima Melson is a is a, a major supporter, and then like my mom, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother. Those are all people. Like those four people right there are are people that. Uh, have pushed me to be the person I am today. Then, you know, I have my other friends, like just from back home, Derek, Darius, Joey, like my, my close-knit friends that really, you know, grew up with me, you know, through sports and, you know, you know, through life I've met, you know, phenomenal people like Brady and just like my coaches, Coach Joey, Coach Ellis, you know, Frank, Coach G. It's, it's a, it's a, a Hey, I want them to get the shout out. I want all those people to get some love. Feel me? Absolutely. It's it's a lot of people that really that really you know poured knowledge into me, and that allowed me to 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 be the person I am to really grow. Like I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for those people and that I named it and much more because you know my mom always emphasized it takes a village to raise a child. So I was put in a in a an amazing opportunity to to have a, a great village around me. You know through the ups and downs of life. Uh, it was it was it was nothing short of amazing that 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 really you know got me to the point I am today and gave me the the thought process and the mindset that I have that I always want I'm a big village guy big family guy and whatever I can do to make the village happy and and you know, bring more people into the village into the ecosystem that's what I'll do. Was there ever any uh, knucklehead period of your life then when you were a teenager? <sighs> Man, knucklehead, yeah. <laughs> so like you know my uh, my young years, I'd probably say. So like I'll go by like grade to like first grade, probably to sixth grade, you know, I was I wasn't I wasn't the best kid, you know. I was a good kid, but I was, you know, kinda of always trying to be the jokester of the class. I was in and out of detention, in and out of the principal's office, you know, got into a couple altercations here and there, things like that, you know. So it wasn't always, you know, on a straight and narrow, you know, you gotta have some bumps along the way to really, you know, just experience life and 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 learn things so you know i definitely had that knucklehead phase you know uh the phase where i thought i was you know i was good i didn't have to listen to anybody i can figure things out by myself and yeah it was a it was a great uh learning experience for 
for those years when, <laughs> you know, I had to learn uh, uh, some life lessons or two. Hey, so you and I can keep it real. I remember writing an article about you when you signed with the team. We talked about like, hey, what's something that someone doesn't know about West Bowers they should? You mentioned your secret talent of cooking. Ooh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, and, oh man. I love now, it. Now, how did you learn to cook? And then your go-to dish has got to be more than what you told me before because <laughs> – uh, you said, was it chicken Alfredo or Alfredo with pasta? And, and yeah, so you boil the noodles. Yeah. And, and then, you, then you open up the jar. Yeah. <laughs> like, Come on, man. That's not cooking. Man. No, you're absolutely right. But I do love to cook. Uh, I learned that at a young age. Uh, my mom really instilled that in me. You know, I was, so I'm my only child raised by a single mom. So I had to learn some things, you know, to, to make sure I was self-sufficient. Like every holiday, I always had to make a dish, always had to bring something to the table. And so that's when I started learning how to cook. Uh, and like like right now, actually, um, on every Thursday, me and uh, our teammate Amari Catchings, he plays O-line for us. We, we do a big meal. We cook for the team. We cook for our guys. We, so we, we do that. Like, we, like I know we had chicken fajitas one day. We had a taco Tuesday. We had a chicken wing Thursday. And we like one time we did uh, chicken and waffles. Like we really we do a lot. We, we we really get it in. You know, it's something that we love to do. Uh, we love to cook, make people happy. So just put it together. Um, but like, man, this is it's fun. And I the the chicken Alfredo is my go to. It's very simple. So it was something I was always depend on. You get that jar of Alfredo sauce. You boil those noodles. You, you just sizzle up that chicken and you got yourself a meal. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah. how long does it take to cook for that many people? You're talking about the whole team? Whole team. So whoever whoever wants to come, uh, whoever, you know, whoever has, you know, that wants to be there, we sent out the invitation. I know last time we ended up cooking about 150 wing, chicken wings, roughly. We did about six different sauces, you know, spicy. We did, you know, buffalo, barbecue, hot honey, lemon pepper. So it was it, it takes some time. It gets real hot in that kitchen. Uh, took probably about hour, hour and a half to really, you know, to get things done. Depending on the meal, like chicken and waffles, probably took two hours, and then like, so it, it all really depends. But man, it's really nothing, you know, it's nothing when it when it when it's for the family. So it's it's all fun. Yeah, save me a plate then when I come down. All right, absolutely, sir. You got, absolutely. you got to hook me up. Got you, man. Got you. It's it's gonna be awesome. Hey, Wes, what's it like for you, an East Coast guy uh, living out in California for the first time? It's different. It's different. I remember, you know, every day, every day for camp, I woke up and I took a picture of the hills, you know, right at, right, right where we practiced. I took a picture every day. I just walked out there probably about 30 minutes and just, just enjoyed it because it's so different. I've never seen as much tree, this much green. And I like, I joke with people, I'm like, the air is really different out here. Like we're in open space. You just breathe it in. It's, it's a, it's an amazing place. And it's like, it's, we first got here, I was like, ah, is this what California really is? Because it was raining a lot. Like, it was a, a whole lot of rain. But uh, it's been nothing short of amazing. Just the, just the environment, the, the, the city that we're in, Morgan Hill, is awesome. And it really just, you know, the West Coast has a, a special place in my heart. <laughs> I, I really like it. The food is great. The people are amazing. The weather is fantastic. I, it's like, it's a dream come true. Hey, Wes, what's the vibe of this team as you have two games left of making a run at what you hope would be a championship? The vibe of this team is it's, it's, it's nothing like I've seen before. A lot of guys, a, a, a motivated bunch of, a, a group of guys that aren't satisfied with any of the success we've had thus far. Um, you know, and that stems from the coaches down. You know, it, we know as professional athletes, it's hard to win football games, and we're, we're excited to win these games, but we know what it takes to win games. And, you know, we've had coaches that won championships that has one championship. We've had players that have won championships. So they understand that, you know, regular season is coming to end. We know what you know the regular season is hard, but now it's it's where, you know, championships are made. That that last push, you know, every practice has to be a championship game. Every rep has to be a championship game. So we understand that, you know, we, we know what it takes, what it's gonna take for us to even, you know, get the opportunity to to think about winning a championship and it always starts with the mind and then we have to, the work has to follow. So this is a very motivated group of guys that's high energy, a lot of positive positive energy and environment. And you know, we never get too high, never get too low. And it's just it's a phenomenal feeling to be able to be a part of 
an organization like this. The number one seed's not out of the question in the West. He needs some help, obviously, you know, to get there. What about the prospect of having to do this on the road? You know, uh, Coach Wooten always says championships are won on the road. So we know if we do have to go on the road, we know what we must do. We know what we need to do. So at home or on the road, we understand, you know, what the, what the goal is and what the end goal is, what, what, what must be done. So we're excited either way. We just, we, we just want to continue to play the game that we love at a high level. Love your smile. You're pretty good at this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Panthers linebacker, Wes Bowers. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Wow. <laughs>